name's Joey Cape. I played in a band called Lagwagon for about 27 years, and I have a whole bunch of other bands. I also do uh, solo acoustic records. As long as I can remember, music was always just one of the only things that I really understood, you know? My dad was a, a pianist, and he was also a singer, and he traveled pretty extensively around the world singing. And my sister was a pianist that actually, she was accepted to Juilliard when she was about nine years old. My brother, sort of a jazz fusion guitar player, they're all better musicians than I am, but none of them really wrote songs. I always kind of justify the fact that I'm a bit of a hack on my instrument, but that's it for me with music. It's, it's, it's less about the technical aspects. You know, I, I'm moved much more deeply by a great song. He was sentenced with no explanation and no jury or trial. He's a scapegoat of the imagination and your coolest denial. He would have let down on tracks for you. I always loved aggressive music, you know, I just, all of it the kind of uh, anti-establishment stuff. I mean, when you're a teenager, what's better than that? You know, those were the years that, uh, in the very early 80s, I was playing in a cover band. I mean, we did like Stairway to Heaven and like Cars songs, like we were awful. Anyway, these punks from high school, I was in junior high, they showed up and this, this, this guy, Matt Davis, he was sort of my mentor. And he came and he was like, hey kid, you going to high school next year? So I want you to be in my band. So I joined this band called Urban Assault. And I'd already liked some of the punk stuff I'd heard. I, you know, I'd, I'd heard the Ramones, obviously the Stooges, MC5, and then the early, early influential stuff like that. But I always liked metal too. And and when I think about my band Lagwagon, I really don't see us as a punk rock band. Um, but these things aren't up to you. These are kind of labels that other people give you. And they shouldn't really matter to you. You just make music and wherever you end up. If you're lucky, you end up in a scene that they've chosen for you that actually does well, and then you just go, well, all right, I'm all right with this, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Lagwagon was, has been my main thing, and they're sort of, they get the kind of the first right of refusal of everything I do. And then I had a band called Bad Astronaut for a long time, which was, uh, that was a little bit more experimental. Uh, and I have this really silly band, which I like to call the Holiday Band. It's called Me First and the Gimme Gimmies, and it's a cover band. We started that band, uh, well, actually, Chris Shiflett and I, who's now in the Foo Fighters, so we I hardly ever see him. Chris Shiflett and I lived together in San Francisco in one of the first apartments I moved in there, and I, I, I would play him these songs from the 70s that I love so much, like John Denver and Barry Manilow and Neil Diamond and all those, like, just great songs with, like, the worst lyrics. Guilty pleasures, right? And, uh, and he... He dug them, so we, we started putting this list on, on our refrigerator. We had this list of these songs that we thought would make great punk songs. And then Fat Mike got involved, and it started out as just sort of like a thing to do so that we could play at pubs and bars for our friends at home when we were all back in the city and not on tour. And then it was just totally weird. People liked it, and they bought the records, and then the band started to outsell my own band. And then I, then I felt like, what have I done? I've created this joke of a thing, and now it's outselling my serious band. What's wrong with my songs? But that's a problem if you if you just pick like top ten hits, you know. But we also have a really great singer in that band. Spike, our singer, is he's amazing. And there's about five other bands. I mean, I'm just one of those people. I when I'm not touring, I like to stay creative and be busy, and I I just feel like, well, this is what I do. And when I had long breaks in my life during what I, would, I guess my career, I, I would think, well, I, I could just do a project with somebody, you know? And so things just kept starting. Many of those things don't carry on, but an album will come out of it or something. And it's nice. I like to look back on, I've done so many records now and, and some of them people will never hear, but it's still kind of cool, you know, just to be working with different people. The new album is really not all that different. I, I kind of tend to always write songs about these core subjects that I I feel like I can connect to in a song better than I can other things. And, and they're generally slightly you know, melancholic or depressing. People who know my music know me pretty well, uh, and I don't know them. So sometimes um, 
that gets a little strange. How do you suffer, feel pain, feel sorrow for anything? All those bodies in your wake. I, I think most singer-songwriters, they write on acoustic regardless of where the songs end up or what band they're in. Brian Wallstrom's a guy I've been playing with for years now, probably six years we've been touring together. And when you write together, and Brian and I have become a bit of a writing team, we wrote my record together, his record together, the last Lagwagon record, I wrote a lot of it with Brian. When there's a piano and an acoustic track, it's got, you know, all the frequencies. Like, it, it lends a little bit of bass and bottom end, and most importantly, it makes everything sound more in tune. And it's, it's just, it opens up where you can go. Fuck this, I'm done arguing. A fate is not bound to your cold foretelling. Uh, I, I tell people all the time, I think the LR bag stuff is the best. It just sounds amazing. And uh, I love the DIs, I love, I love the EQ. The venues vary, the monitors really vary. And the one thing that happens over a few years of playing with one DI is that you start to kind of figure out exactly where that EQ, you know, the different, you know, where you want all your knobs. And uh, I had this thing where, uh, you know, I would early on start making like Sharpie marks on my DI's and it was just a little too lazy to put tape on them. Whatever, I own this thing, I could write on it. But as you play more shows, it starts to vary. And then pretty soon you're, you're memorizing like, okay, that black mark is just a little lower than that. This one, it's a little higher, you know, that kind of thing. And finally one day, I just had had like five shows in a row where it just sounded just right for the guitar that I had played for 20 years or whatever. And so I just thought, well, why not just epoxy the whole thing? Just, just pour glue over it. And then they're just never gonna move and I don't have to worry about it ever again. I have a different guitar now. Kind of regret that decision. <laughs> but yeah, it was fun. The big goal is when you find a guitar you love, that when you play it, you go, this just sounds great. I love this guitar. You know, you put a mic on it, it sounds good. The big goal is you want a pickup that emulates that. What it seems like I'm hearing with the Anthem is that it just gets a very natural sound. I'm excited to actually use it in the studio because I always record a DI track because I'm a big fan of having that to blend. Um, so I'm really excited to do that, but I haven't had a chance to. But so far I love it and it's making the guitar sound the same to me as it does. So, thumbs up. Yeah, and I bought the M1 because I saw, I, I had a J45 that I got. I finally got one of those, you know what I mean? Like 10 years ago or something, I like, got one. And then I'm a big fan of Jeff Tweedy, and I saw that his setup was basically the, the guitar I have, maybe not the same year, but pretty much, and he had an M1 in it. I thought, you know, I always love the way he sounds live, so I'm gonna do that same exact thing. And that really works for that guitar. And now we got one in my big Gibson, the Elvis. Just, it's, it's great. LR Bags has been really kind to me. I can't be loved Fight.